Well, it's a miserable day out today, so I figured I'd do some work on the latest project here. This is uh, my neighbor's Ferguson T-030. Um, they asked me to uh, go through it to get it running for uh, my neighbor's birthday, coming up in less than a month. I was planning on doing some work on the uh, my tender over here, but it's raining pretty good out, so I'd rather not get soaked today. Um, I'm actually planning on selling this thing. Um, I just don't think I'm going to use it as much as I thought I would. Um, the whole I bought this thing at an auction um, because P I get a, I get contacted a lot. People looking to buy corn, but they want small quantities. You know, 100 pounds. You know, a couple bushels worth, and it's just not worth my time to go all the way down an hour to the farm to sell them that small amount of corn. So I bought this thing. Plan was to fill it up with dry corn, keep it in my pole barn, and then sell them however much they want by the you know by the pound or whatever. Because um, I could just go out in the backyard and do it. But uh, you know this thing here, it's on a trailer frame, so it'll go down the road a lot better than the gravity wagons will on you know the hay wagon style running gear. So that was why I picked this up, and uh, it is a little rough. It's you know it's a fertilizer tender. That's what it was used for since it was you know since it was new. So um, it's just a little rough, but it's not awful. I had it running last night. Um, got a video for a couple couple of the guys that were interested in it, but when I folded that auger out, it locked it up and it shut the tractor down. So there's something in the auger tube right there that's preventing the flighting from spinning. So I was gonna put a pipe wrench on that end shaft over there and get it to spin over, but it's pouring out today, so that's a job for tomorrow. So, <clears throat> but we're gonna go through uh, this Ferguson here for the neighbor. Um, I got a six volt battery there, I'm gonna throw that in right now. Um, parts are on order for this. I ordered the tune-up kit. So, you know, plugs, wires, uh, coil, condenser points, all that. That's on its way. I also ordered up the carb kit for it. There's no fuel in this thing right now. I'm sure there was when they parked it. I'm sure they didn't. I'm sure they didn't drain the fuel out of it and try to save the carburetor. So I'm sure the carb is all gummed up. So I have that coming for it. Um, I might need a start switch for it as well. I tried jumping it the other day, um, and I couldn't get it to kick over to start this thing. You have your main power switch here, but. Um, you can see, you know, one, two, three, four, reverse, and then there's an S right here. To start this thing, you kick it over, and you push it into the start position. And that's how you start these. That way there, you never start it in gear. Never seen anything like that before, so that's a little different. But um, I'm just going to give it a good good once-over, change the oil in it. Um, he thought that this little grommet here for the shifter might have been leaking, so there might be water in the transmission. So I'll drain that out as well, and uh, go from there. So, without without having any of the parts for it, really, besides the battery, there's only so much I can do to it right now. But um, I'll do what I can just to stay busy today. So we'll set you up, and we'll go through it. All right. First, I'm going to just pull the battery off, and I'm looking at these. Terminals here are pretty shot, so I might have to go down to the auto parts store and get some terminals. sitting for he said like two or three years out in the field at his place. Um, I guess he used to plow snow with it and he did uh he well, did food plots and stuff for deer or whatever on his back property. He kind of did everything with this. And then he said it started running rough one day. It was kind of missing a little bit so he parked it. Meant to get to it. 
did. So this is actually the guy. Um, I don't think I ever made any videos of it, but I had an Alice 160 that I bought off of this guy here. And uh, I just sold it maybe four or five months ago. Um, it was right before I bought my uh, drain dryer, printer, and all that. Um, he's the one that sold it to me. Uh, I guess he he was doing some work on it. For, was doing some work on it for a farmer, uh, a couple towns away, and uh, it was definitely it was, it was farm fresh. The tractor was pretty rough, and. Uh, I guess the needed some head work done to it, and uh, the front main seal was leaking. So he got the head work done on it, and then uh, went to go put the front main seal in it. And I don't think he knew too much about tractors, but he bought the wrong front main seal. He bought it for the. Uh, for the gas drop 160 didn't fit so he bought another one and it was for the once the gas drop again and uh so i think he just right about dead found out the old man who owned the tractor passed and didn't have didn't have anyone no one came looking for the tractor i don't know if it was just like he was you know, his wife passed, he didn't have kids or what it was, but they couldn't get a hold of anyone for the tractor. And then uh, he didn't want to put more money into it if no one was going to come for it. So he just sat in his barn for like six, seven years, he said. And then they, they were getting ready to move, so they wanted the tractor out of there. And uh, he saw my Alex sitting up on the road, so he swung by to see if I'd be interested in it. It was a, it was, it was all a piece. The radiator was out of it, no tin on it. The radiator port was gone. He had the crank seal out. Um, he had the head on it, but it wasn't torqued. So I got the right crank seal for the diesel engine. You know, I had a Perkins 158 in it, I think, and uh, I got it running. But. Uh, it had blow by it, you wouldn't believe. It was pushing oil out of the breather. Um, it started hard. I just didn't have the time, really, to do anything else to it. So I threw it up for sale, and the uh, guy bought it off me, and I think he's gonna go through the whole thing. But that's how I met these people here, and I knew I was a diesel mechanic specialized in ag equipment on the side so they were like hey you want to uh, make a couple bucks and work on the track for us I said sure why not so. so that's where we're at I'm gonna have to probably get a new terminal for this because I shouldn't it's just the terminal is not compressing onto the battery lug. There you go. So I mean it should should grab onto it.
Yeah, shouldn't be this hard to put a damn battery cable on, but. Already gone through and washed it. It was covered in moss. There's a mouse nest in it, and I didn't want all that thing in my garage. There's a mouse nest in it, just because I don't need don't need that. But it already looks times better than it did, so that's big. Um, it's got good tires on it. It looks like he replaced the tires not too long ago. There is some, a little bit of dry rot right there in between the lugs on the tires, but I bet you these are like cheap, cheap tires. Probably gonna, what do they got on here? Well, the good years. I don't know, maybe just gonna sit so long outside, that's probably why. This one here, this battery lug here is pretty rough, so I think I'm probably going to have to replace this one. I might put it on just to see if I can get the track and turn over. I kind of want to see if it will turn over with a good battery on it. The other day when I pulled this in, I tried, like I said, I tried to see if it would start, and I couldn't get it to kick over. So I'm going to see if I have power to the main switch right here, which I do. When I kick that on, I got power there. So. not have it all the way over the start position. Alright, so that's cool. Um, kick it over, see if she'll so, do something. Check the oil one more time. She's full. He wants to change the oil, not on it. It does not look like old oil at all. Um, there's no gas in it, so it's not going to start. Even if the car was in good shape. Uh, let's see here. Oops. Just for shits. Let's see if. Uh,
Oh yeah, Kenny, he's here kicking around house right there. around like you know farm all in nation stuff but well, this is probably about the same era I guess. <laughs> I had uh, my tools are everywhere. I had my 24 valve common sitting in here last week. I was going through it, and I'm only putting all my tools back, so they're everywhere. So maybe just a big set of ice grips. Maybe I can get that out. And just spin it freely. Maybe I'm gonna get that one. seized up on there. So tighten it back up and I'll just keep shooting some ether down the intake. See if she kicks. you over so I'm looking at here so see if you got spark you just pull the distributor cap off and see if I can do this here one-handed this is your rotor this is what distributes the spark to the spark plugs pop that off a little dust cap comes off and that is your condenser right there and your points. Your points are gapped. Um, another thing I can try too is because this thing sat so long sometimes um, the points will get kind of messed up. You can file those down. So I might file them. Shut the power off. Um, but what I'm going to do first is I might see if I can set you up somewhere. Maybe let's hold you over. When you're cranking this over, you're gonna see a. It should be a bright blue spark right there as these points open and close, and that's what sends your spark out to your plugs. So let's see if we even have a have points there because the amount of or points there. Let's see if we have a spark there because the amount of starting fluid I shot down there it should have kicked.
There we go. Couldn't find it. All right, let's see. So I got nothing, no spark there. Which I kind of assumed. So what we can do is check our coil. And oh my. I'm gonna set your back up here so I can work with two hands. Yeah, it's real low budget. I know I'm doing it on my phone. Chickens outside are not happy. over you should that should be blinking it like distrib it interrupts the spark the power I believe and kick over the um, your condenser <laughs> Again, I have stupid try and get it running like this because I have everything new coming for it. But I'm just curious, so I'm gonna file the points down with a little bit of sandpaper if I can find some, and then um, I might adjust the I'll adjust the points. I'm not sure what. Oh, look at that, man! They're good. I don't know if it's my neighbor. So my phone shut off while I was trying to show you this, but someone went and put all the specs right on the side of the fuel tank. So plug gap, point gap, valve specs, all that. So that's gonna help me out a lot in the long run. Um, what I'm gonna do next is go get some sandpaper and I'm gonna file the points down. There's a little bit of corrosion there in between the points, so I'm gonna do that. Um, and then we'll go from there. I'll probably end up uh, draining the oil out after that, put some fresh oil in it. And uh, I gotta find a oil filter first. I didn't get one from, I didn't get one online. I was hoping I could find one at uh, the auto parts store or something around here. Wishful thinking, I know, but we'll see. So we'll catch up with you guys in a little bit after I find uh, some of the stuff I need. All right, so all I did was took a piece of sandpaper and, oh, there's still a little piece in there. I'll get that out. Um, took a piece of sandpaper and I just, Open the gap up like that, stuck it in there, and then ran the paper, the piece of sandpaper back and forth, did that on both sides. And now, if you can see that, if I can get it. It's not great, but there's a spark there. So I'm going to put all this back together and. We're gonna see if I can get it to fire off of ether. I think that goes like that. This here, it's got a timing mark on it. it just kind of falls in place like that. What's that look like? That looks all right. None of this really looks that bad. I'm sorry, my camera skills are all over the place trying to do this one-handed. Um, but none of the All right, got you set back up here. Couldn't get that in one hand. So. I don't know if this dust cover is... Oh, there we go. That's better. Cool.
good batter and everything else, they never spin over fast enough to, uh, you just, you don't think it's spinning over fast enough to kick off. It's actually, I have, uh, there's a Farmall M outside that, um, belongs to the Escobars, who are the farmers that I work for on the weekends, you know, on Paul McCann and so on and so forth. Um, they have had that M, they bought that M brand new, that was the first international that ever came to the farm. I think they had John Deere before that. And, uh, that had been sitting for, God, I don't know how long. It was sitting for a long time over at the farm. They used to run, they used to use it for, uh, Bunch of stupid stuff, you know. They run feed out the cows and pasture with it. Uh, they ready to take with it occasionally and whatnot, but anyway. um, they ran it out of fuel one day. Kid running it ran it out of fuel, and it died right by the gate and cow pasture. He just left it there. I don't know why. And the cows went, had their way with it. I mean, it sat there for probably at least six months, probably close to a year, honestly. And uh, the cows ate plug wires, and they kind of wrecked it. They were scratching themselves on it. Um, I finally pulled it up to the barnyard and tried to get it running. The starter switch was all screwed up. Um, stuff so they wanted to get it running finally uh, they wanted to use it for uh, to move the hay wagon around or not the hay wagon but the hay ride wagon around and um, couldn't get it running so they asked me to get it going for them I took it back up here and uh, come to find out and Someone had put a 12 volt battery in it and it was still set up for 6 volt, fried a bunch of stuff. So I gotta do the conversion on it. It's been sitting out here for pretty much all winter. I just, I haven't had time to get to it. And I couldn't fit it in the garage here either. Like, take the stack off, it'll fit, but um, I just, I hadn't had time to work on it. So I gotta get the 12 volt kit coming for that so I can get that back to them. They don't need it. It's, so I'm, I guess I'm not really in a huge rush to do it, but. What I'm going to do now, I pulled the spark plug out. I'm just wondering if I'm going to get spark at the plug. So you're going to ground out the plug wire by leaning it up against the block and just kick it over and see if you get spark there. And I don't like to touch the plug wires when I do this because I've gotten shot before doing it. I mean, technically shouldn't because you touch just a rubber wire, but I don't know. I got shocked. So I'm going to lean that up against the block there. Wow. 
spark and plug. So we'll put the plug back in there. because there's no sense of trying to get it and mess around with stuff, but I'm just going to replace everything anyway. I'm just, this is just curiosity at this point, but, um, crush that water. There's water in it. It's got a new glass bowl in here for the fuel, that's cool. Um, so I'm probably gonna call it here. I should check my email and see when the parts are supposed to show up. I ordered the car kit and the tune-up kit in the same spot, so ideally it should be getting here at the same time. I'm just not sure when I ordered it on Monday. I ordered it Monday and Saturday, so it's probably coming soon. Um, so yeah, that's all we're gonna do for now, I guess. We'll uh, catch you on the next one, part two. Part two, we'll do the, the uh, ignition system, rebuild the carburetor, and uh, probably do an oil change. I'm gonna call up the Napa and see if I can get an oil filter for this thing. If they have something in stock, then they can get it. If not, I'll get it online. And the brakes should probably get adjusted too. We got this here, I was towing about, my wife was driving my pickup and I was, she was towing me behind the truck. And going down the hills, I was riding the brakes and there wasn't anything there. So I might have to adjust the brakes as well. Cause that's gonna be handy once we get it on, obviously. So, um, yeah, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.